Hi guys, here is MIH. Apart from the projects that I had released recently, I'm also doing a bunch of smaller ones, more or less with success. I just decided to give a briefing of what I've done in this month in the form of this lab notes video. Anyways, I have been setting up two cells that are meant to sustain for a few months. One is a chloride cell and one is a sulfuric acid cell. I periodically check them and refill them with materials. And when it's time, I'll take them apart and harvest the products. My most recent harvest of the sulfuric acid cell was from about 300 grams of copper sulfate. And I boiled the acid down until it starts giving off noxious acid fumes. I let the acid cool down and measured its density. Uh, its density turns out to be about 1.63, which corresponds with a concentration of about 70% by weight of sulfuric acid. It's not as high as I expected, as the fume point of sulfuric acid is usually around 80%, and it has a bunch of copper sulfate still in it, but it is good enough and should be handy on many experiments. Now to my next project. I read about the haloform reaction and that I can generate chloroform conveniently with bleach and acetone. Upon more research, I found out that ethanol can be used instead of acetone, which is very good because here in China we cannot get acetone very easily. So I got a large bottle of the most concentrated bleach I can. Still, it was only around like 4%. I measured out 100 milliliters of it in a bottle and added to it about 1 milliliter of ethanol. I then capped and shaked the bottle and left there for a whole day. When I came back, I poured everything out and sadly there are no signs of reaction. The color of the bleach was still there and there was absolutely no signs of layer separation. Upon further look, the bleach contained some surfactants impurities, which probably explains why it didn't work. However, I just wanted to get chloroform as fast as possible, so I went ahead to try making some chloroform on my own. I came to my chloride cell, dumped out its electrolyte, and fed some fresh sodium chloride solution in. I swapped the electrode and electrolyzed it for a few hours to get some clean bleach. Then I thought, why don't I just do the reaction in the cell instead of taking out the bleach and do it that way? I dumped 5 milliliters of ethanol straight into the cell and switched on the power again. Just a few minutes later, the cell got quite hot because of the large current, and the room was filled with an aromatic smell. I'm not really sure if this is chloroform because I never smelled it before, but I'm pretty certain that it is not ethanol. Notice that in this reaction, the ethanol is first oxidized to ethanol by a hypochlorite, and then the byproduct is sodium chloride, which can be electrolyzed in the cell again to form more sodium hypochlorite. So in theory, if we run the cell long enough, all of the chlorine atoms in the sodium chloride will be eventually converted to the chloroform, while leaving a solution of sodium hydroxide, sodium formate, sodium carbonate, and various other reaction products. Since commercial bleach contains a large amount of sodium chloride and only a small amount of sodium hypochlorite, a lot of bleach is needed to produce a tiny amount of chloroform. My method here utilizes all chlorine atoms in the sodium chloride, which should make things much more efficient. However, it was until now that I realized that something is going wrong. Due to the large current, the chloroform and the ethanol was all pulling away before they have a chance to react with the hypochlorite. Furthermore, the hypochlorite disproportionates into chloride and chloride under this kinds of temperature conditions. The haloform reaction itself also creates a lot of heat, which further heats the cell up. So in the end, I wasn't able to retrieve any chloroform. A better method would be electrolyzing for a few hours to generate some hypochlorite, and then turning off the power and then add ethanol, and remove the chloroform obtained by pipetting it out. Then switch on the cell again to make more hypochlorite and continue the cycle. I would definitely try this reaction again in the near future, and I'll definitely report how it goes. Although I have more projects to demonstrate, I don't really want to make this video too long, so this is all for today's lab notes video. Thank you for listening.